right. <laughs> now it's all right. Hey, welcome everybody to Beyond the Pale Ale. Um, that's my channel, right? I can't remember. Um, we're gonna go with it. So today I've got Philip Picasso, uh, award-winning author. Uh, his new book, Gothic, is what we're talking about, and we have a special guest uh, tonight, Eric Fox, who voiced the audiobook for Gothic. And Eric, I have to say, I just finished it yesterday, and you killed it. Like, absolutely killed it. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome when, um, when I get to read something that I'm like, Oh, <laughs> this, yeah. oh, hey, look what, oh, this is great. I'm having such a good time reading this. That's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I want to be reading. That's the caliber of stuff that I hope I continue to get to read. It was this, this, this is absolutely my favorite book that I've done so far. Wow, that's it, awesome. It was, it was, it was so much fun. And I want to ask Philip about it. If I, I know you probably haven't. You said you got to listen to some of it, but um, I think if you ever did listen to it, I kind of find like you would have been the writer of a movie, right? And then I'm the director of the movie that ends up actually coming out. And like, I'm always curious if my vision of what ended up coming out and what it felt like and what the vibe was and how much that meshes with your vision. Like, I don't have a lot of interaction with any of the authors that I work with. So uh, previous audiobooks, what has it been like when you, have you ever like listened to an audiobook and went, what the hell was that? That wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't what I was going for at all. How did he get that? Yeah. Um, no, I, it, it... And I remember Eric messaging me when he, I think you were like, you had just, you were just kind of, you, you were like midway through the book or partial way through the book. And you messaged me, you're like, man, I'm really enjoying this book. And I was, I was very flattered. It's the first time it's ever happened to me, but um, no. And I'll tell you why. Cause I don't, I, I, I don't listen to the books, the audio of my books um, I, for the same reason. I don't reread my books once they are published. There is nothing I can do to the book to fix it. Yeah. So, and all I hear are mistakes and all I read are mistakes. So, uh, so I never, once a book is published, I, I, I'm like dealer out. I move on um, because I just, I, it's, it's too, it's too heart wrenching for me. It's too, I get too much anxiety listening to my own work. Um because I just want to keep fixing it and fixing and fixing it. But uh, um, but to answer your other question, I have listened to por part portions of other books and um, and I don't wouldn't say that I've had um, that kind of response where I've been like, oh my God, this is totally not what I'm was going for tonally mm -hmm. or whatever. But um, but um, I think the guys who have done my other books have been from the have been pretty good but i think and i did listen to my wife downloaded the audible book and she listened to it and the whole thing and she was like saying how great it was and so she and she um played like the first like we listened to like the first half of the first chapter um and i thought you sounded i'm not just saying this to be nice i really did i legit was like well oh, that's the guy sounds awesome like that sounds because sometimes you hear like ray porter books or whatever, or you hear these like bigger time narrators and and you're kind of like, oh man, that sounds really good. Like that guy does a really that person does like a really great job. And um and that's how I felt when you listening to you do the book. I really did. I was like, oh, that sounds like a real professional, like top notch recording narration. So I was very, very happy. And I actually do want to listen to the whole thing. I'm trying to get um I'm trying to get the producer to to send me um like an audio code so I can download it from the web website. Um, but like I said, I just found out yesterday because I was talking about it with my wife. She that she has it, so I might log into her account. But I never leave the house. That's the reason I don't listen to audiobooks. I never leave the house. I don't go anywhere. Um, so I'm never like in my car commuting and listening to audiobooks or podcasts or stuff like that. 
but um but I do want to listen to I do want to listen to it. I'm very interested to hear how you do some of the scenes um mm, yes. in that in that book. There's a couple there... scenes in there that are pretty wild. I want to hear how you do the baby. The baby scene. Yeah, the baby, scene. Gonna say the baby oh scene. Yeah. It's the baby it's, scene that's... in particular. Oh, by the way, this is uh, uh, Journey into yes. the Night by Rapture Brewing. And I'm going to be you. drinking this yes. now. And I wanted to make sure I. Thank you for, for uh, fulfilling my contract, my contractual. Right. And I also have my Rapture glass. For you. So this is all there it is. going into, into that. Look at that pour. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's a good pour, huh? That is. Uh, you got a little bit, a little bit of head on there, but that's okay. Well, because I had to raise it for camera, Mitch. Yeah, I know. Hey, I'm not judging. You know. Um, the anyway, baby scene. Yeah, all true. The baby scene is my Man. It was my favorite part of the whole book, but it was it was right. pretty much in line with the reason why I liked it so much. There were a couple of um, instances of like uh, kind of a surreal. Like he would end up in a surreal situation and you're, you're asking yourself, well, what is actually happening? What is he actually experiencing? What is in his head? How is he being manipulated? And it reminded me, a lot of people are talking about how it's a, like a throwback novel, mm -hmm. to like earlier King and stuff like that. And I agree with that. But in my head, it was also like a throwback, um, like a horror movie, the stuff they used to do later in the 80s when it was really uh, a lot of stuff was like a question of well what's actually happening right now i think one of the things they did best with that was uh the dream sequences in the first freddy krueger movie when she like fell asleep in the class and it just very slowly kind of everybody sort of drifts away and you really get a sense that she actually <clears throat> fell asleep and then she's not really there and there's another movie called Brain Dead that was Bill Paxton and Bill Pullman at the same time. There's two movies called Brain Dead. There's one made by the guy who made the Lord of the Ring movies. I'm not talking about that one. There's another Peter one. Peter Jackson. Yeah. yeah, Peter Jackson. I'm not talking about that one. That one is a that one is a gore classic. This one is very much like a mental. It's it's a brain surgeon, and he's messing with people's brains and people's memories. But then you realize that it's his memories that are being messed with. And every time he like steps through a door, it's a slightly different version of what's going on. And you never really know what's real at all. It's very eerie. It's very disconcerting. Um, it's one of my favorite movies ever made. And this, and this in a lot of ways reminded me of that. Just like the his change, the way his brain was changing mm -hmm. as he went along and the, <laughs> just to have a just to have a baby just to be able uh, to play a baby screaming at somebody about what a loser he is <laughs> in the right. middle of a restaurant and nobody else notices i was so happy that day yeah you crushed the baby yeah. scream by the way i love the baby scream well, i can't wait to hear it <laughs> yeah that was a, that that was a very uh, fun scene to write and that was also um over, i you know i say this book gets described a lot as like a throwback or old school or whatever but mm. honestly what i was you know it's this particular novel was one of the, it was more of just like i just kind of wanted to like cut loose like i just wanted to be like i'm just gonna have fun with this and i'm just gonna go crazy and um and like have dialogue in all capital letters and have um overly italicized portions with you know probably multiple exclamation points and have these wild characters and have these mm. wild scenes and and i you know it, it, my inspiration for the tone of the book was um sam raimi's drag me to hell mm. uh which is one of my favorite movies uh speaking of favorite movies and um i wanted to hit that tone where it was just like scary and dramatic and but also like a little bit campy um but but no, yep. but not in a totally bad low budget way just kind of in like a in like a stylistic way so that was really the tone that was really what i was going for with writing this book where if you read my other books none of them are really the same tone as gothic it's kind of its own thing yeah um so but I, so yeah it's it, i would imagine it'd be kind of a 
an interesting one to 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 narrate there's a yeah so lot to, going I on. Mean, to hear you say that tonally i think we we landed right in the pocket because that's mm-hmm. that's pretty much where i was and that's what's great because like i was talking <laughs> i was talking to some friends of mine last night while playing dungeons and dragons by nice. the way just so we're all aware yeah. what's actually going on in eric life <laughs> and a dude was like i was talking about the book and a friend of mine was like so you read the whole book out loud <laughs> i'm like yes that is what i do he's like you do a, a, times, yeah. a voice yeah. for everybody like everybody's got a different voice I'm like, yep that's that's pretty much what it and then another dude said i've listened to audiobooks where the guy doesn't change his voice at all yep for, mm. for different <clears throat> i'm like what what how do you have any idea who's talking what's tricky about doing audiobooks is um because i do animation and video game stuff too and i get to be very big in both of those things i can be enormous and actually yeah. they always want bigger so you start and then mm. they want more and it's very very tiring but when you're doing an audiobook and you're talking right into somebody's ear you really can't ever be that big so you can't mm. make gigantic choices when you change the uh, different voices and the closer you get to reality the more every voice has to be humaner and humaner and humaner which gives you less room to differentiate mm. gothic was like okay. right in this place where i had a little more room to mess around with how everybody talked to make everybody really distinctive without turning anybody into a cartoon. Mm -hmm. So because it was just bordering on campy and a little bit bigger, that's, it was, it was like a vacation. It was gorgeous. I think bigger is such a great word to use because that, that's kind of the word I was searching for when I was just describing the book. And I think it kind of goes big and in the sense of tone, it it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes big. The other scene that I'm curious to hear you do, um, and I have not had a chance to listen to is the, um, the drawer scene. Ooh. Mm. The unbreak my heart. Yeah. The unbreak my heart Mm. scene. Yeah. Eric does a very good job. Did you, did you sing, did you sing it? Did you sing the unbreak my heart part? I didn't sing it. I didn't, I mm, sort of kind of. Yeah, right. you kind of sung it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to. Uh, I want that. Scene. No, no copyright infringement. Exactly. But... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I want to see that scene on film so bad because I just, Dude. I just Man. had this visual, mm. and yeah. of her screaming mm-hmm. and then just tying in with the audio of like, yeah. "I'm break my heart." She's like, and screaming yeah. and the things, and just like, yeah, I just think it'd be such a fun. Scene yeah, that was film. that was something I wanted to say, Philip. Like every single book that I've read in story that I've read from you, um, it's all like you paint such a vivid picture of every single uh, like scene in your books, and that scene in particular um, was super vivid. And and Eric, the way you read it for the audiobook, and I, I this was the first Fricasse audiobook that I've listened to, mm. um, and so it was really cool to hear something, you know whenever you're reading it, I, I picture it in my head, but to hear it being read, I was able to picture it even more. Um, but man, I, I got such Sam Raimi um, vibes with that uh, scene in particular. And towards the end, whenever like the, I don't want to get too hev- heavily into spoilers, but like the branches of the desk, basically um, mm. I just, I yeah. kept thinking of evil dead Um and in the the branches in that movie, I was like, if, if Sam, I need Sam Raimi to do the Gothic movie so bad. I know, oh. I know. I want. He's got it. Well, his company, Ghost House, his production company, they've got it. Really? Um, they've yeah, they've had it for a while. So I, I, I would. would I don't know. I, at, oh. at some point, I'm. I, that's my dream. I mean, I was talking to um, uh, Ian Rogers uh a couple days ago and um and this is not telling you anything that's not public knowledge and you know sam raimi optioned his book of short stories and is turning his one of his stories into a a feature for um and uh producing a feature of his and and uh 
So those guys are getting kind of tight. So I'm kind of trying to like leverage Ian a little bit. Yeah. Like, come on, man, slip, slip him gossip yes. next time. He, next time he's in town. Um, but yeah, that'd be the dream. But I think um, it needs something. I mean, there's so many, um, there's so many amazing directors uh, working now in the horror field. Mm. I would love, you know, I think like, um, I think Atomic Monster would be a good fit. Uh, James Wan's company. I think yeah. um, Spectre Vision might, would be a good fit. That's uh, Elijah Wood's production company. Those guys, all they all do, they do all horror. But um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm hoping that it gets picked up by somebody. Right now, it has not, it has not, not been uh, optioned. So, but uh, yeah, I could see, I could see somebody hopefully. with a little more, um, I don't know, empath kind of feeling because there, there are, there are scenes that are, I found heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, when sure. Tyson, when Tyson, um, and I'm bad with proper nouns, but his wife, when they're talking, the next day after something happened. And the incident they're yeah they're we'll both the trying incident. they're both yeah. trying to get back to some kind of mm -hmm. normalcy and how do i even talk to this person and right I, I, that was it was like breaking that was my a hard, heart it's a tough that was a hard, tough scene that was a hard scene to write and a lot of people i get i call it the two star scene because uh everyone who dislikes that scene takes two stars off the review for it the book but um <laughs> But um, it's a hard scene, and and um, I'm you know, but in you know, in in my mind, it's one hundred percent necessary for the story because what it does that people get upset about, and the reason people get upset, some people get upset about it, is because they feel it's gratuitous. But the reality is, it's not gratuitous. The other thing that people get upset about it with is they feel they feel mm -hmm. that it's taking it too far. And what I think what people really want to say, what people are really feeling, but they're not saying, is they're like, this made me feel horrible. Yep, it not hurt. fun, horrible, it but it hurt. really hurt me. Yeah, and therefore I'm mad at you for writing it. Yeah, and therefore I'm <clears> going <throat> to review it that way. But the reality is that's exactly what you're supposed to feel. That's the whole point yeah. is that I'm taking you on this journey, and up until now things have been pretty fun and a little kooky, yeah. and we're all kind of we're all. And but I'm showing you that there's actually a very very dark Oof. side side yeah. to all this. And from there it gets, you know, that tone it never really gets back up to that initial level of and you know fun we'll call it of lightness because it from that point on the book kind of gets darker yep. gets pretty dark um and stays pretty dark um uh and so i that you know so and also it really shows you just how you know it's really less about his character and like oh i need to show you this so that you understand just how uh, obsessed his character has become with the desk it's really more about the tone i'm I'm changing the tone of the book mm. um like in real time and um and yeah so it's not necessarily like a fun thing but it's it in a, but it's supposed to but it is supposed to have the impact that it does and somebody somebody wrote the other day they're like i feel like this is like this whole book is about or not the whole book but i feel like the author is just trying to like like say something about um the darkness inside of us and they were like really upset about that and i was like no that's that's kind of that you kind yep. of got it right and i'm sorry that yeah. that's not what you wanted to read but yeah. um but that is what it is so i can imagine as a to your point narrating that scene or that that scene especially which is mm -hmm. told in a sort of flashback as he's remembering it um yeah and and then the ensuing couple chapters there's also the chapter where um which was actually, I think, for me, the hardest to write, and I think it got me very upset, was when he was, um, they were they were kind of on that, uh, him and Sarah were sort of on that, teetering on that cliff edge of what's going to happen. We've been together for 10 years. We love each other. We This is never, nothing like this has ever happened before. What do we, where, you know, what's going to happen next? And then something really positive happens to him. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that whole thing was really interesting for me to write because i was like i really wanted to explore that like he just had like the best news of his life in the worst possible mm -hmm. moment <clears throat> and how do you navigate that um and with his daughter and the, the wife and everything so there was some, some really interesting emotional um 
things to to kind of work with in that in that story. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. totally what I'm talking about the the aftermath. Yeah, and and the attempt at some kind of rebuild and you know wh- what are we going to do? Who are we now? What what do we even call this relationship? Right. Um, yeah. yeah. I found, I found I, that whole. I actually played that for my daughter. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. No, not uh, the. <laughs> Just, just yeah. the, the, the scene, the scene oh, right yikes. up. Well, my my daughter's twenty six, so. You know. Oh, okay, okay, that's okay. Um, but the scene right up to where he gets the phone call, uh, from his right. agent and and the positive. Mm-hmm. So that that the whole area, scene. yeah, 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 yeah. that right. whole area, and she was she was just crying. Yeah, she was yeah. crying. She's like, I don't know who these people are. I I don't know anything about this story, but this is breaking my heart right now and yeah and she's like good job dad i mean because i i really i really really feel it and i'm like yeah you mm-hmm. can't you can't work with something if you don't have something to work with yeah so, yeah you know, it's I only would, because yeah, the words I'm, I'm were there very, i'm very interested to hear you do that scene and there was um and you know it's and this is quick last thing about the narrative but one person one person said i think a couple of them might have mentioned it like oh, like she would have left him in a heartbeat. And it's like, that's not true. Like, if you really think about it, if you're with somebody for a decade and you really love them and you've had a, re- and you have a, you've built something together and something horrible happens between you, it's not like, oh, you know, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, it's mm-hmm. like you have to yeah. figure out where do you go now? And yeah. that's what I think is complex about that scene and that, and that whole situation. But yeah, I can imagine narrating that would have been, um, would have been tough. I I'm glad I didn't have to do that. I mean, I just had to write it. But <laughs> I just had but to it, read it and listen to it. So. <laughs> it's it's great to have something. See, I do I do a lot of romance novels under a uh, under a pseudonym. Oh, you've got the voice for it, Eric. Uh, I'll tell you what, I do not feel that at all. Yeah. But I get cast in a lot of like rom com sort of stuff where I'm like an ex jock or a current jock and. I'm just divorced and I found this new lady and she has a kid and uh, we figure it all out. And it's usually like right. kind of funny and lighthearted. And then there'll be three or four chapters of just hardcore pornography. <laughs> okay. Oh, just, just in yeah. the middle of, you know, like, you know, like in a rom-com where you're watching like on, on uh, lifetime or Netflix or whatever, and they go into a bedroom and it fades to black and then it comes yeah, up yeah. the next day and you just have to, Oh, they did something. While it was black, I read right, books right. where there is no black. <laughs> yeah, you go through the door with them, and then you read <laughs> everything that they did to each other. Oh, and I hate I'm, it! I'm, I hate it so I'm, much. And yeah, I would, I would rather, I would rather have my heart breaking. Yeah, while while reading something, um, because I know that it's this is this is a legitimate these are real feelings that I'm having, not trying to sound okay while I yeah, describe yeah. orifices <laughs> rubbing on other aspects of people. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I'll tell you this as I, a I writer, I've, I've, you. as a, as a writer, I've never, I have no interest at all in ever writing like a sex scene. Like it just doesn't interest me, but, and I don't think I'd be very good at it, but I've read, pretty good sex scenes and um but it's 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 man it, it's not something that i don't know I'm, I'm comfortable with a lot of stuff but like like ugh, i don't think i could i don't think i would do a very good job of it i don't you, know you just dis, you discover exactly how much of a prude you are <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm like, a big time prude yeah i didn't i didn't think i was really <laughs> But I would rather not say this right now. And now I got to <laughs> say it with like with gusto. Well, I was talking to somebody <laughs> recently and we were talking about romance books. And I guess and, and, and they were the, they were I was like on some sort of panel like, for a podcast. Or whatever, and they said, well, can, there's like a rule how many times you can use the word throbbing. <laughs> <laughs> in a book. <laughs> you got to keep it to three. Three is the. Th- Three throbbings or less. I, 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 I will say, I'll say one thing that uh, I have tried to write, like I'm a, a fairly creative person and I have tried to write, I don't have the ability to formulate a beginning, middle and end of an entire story 
and sit down and write a thing that then is a completed thing that I can hand to someone and they can read it and have an experience. I don't yeah. have that capability. So even if it's like, you know, the worst kind of like porn on the planet, I give everybody this, the same level of, dude, you sat down and, and you got mm -hmm. this done and I can't, I can't do that. So I, I give the same, I'm going to do the best that I possibly can for any book. But having said that, I know plenty of books that have gone way over three throbbings. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. You, you, you would be the best person to ask about that. So many. I mean, even a, even a, <laughs> even a bad book is an accomplishment. I don't mean, Complete. To, and I, say, I don't mean objectively bad. I mean, like a poorly written, a book that is, you know, objectively poorly written, it, you know, or whatever. Uh, uh, it's still an accomplishment because you're still, those, right that writer sat down and they started something and they finished something they got it published somehow some way where they did it themselves mm -hmm. or through an indie publisher or sold it to somebody or whatever but um it is it's 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 a tough racket and um i've gotten i've gotten better at better at it than i was when i started I mean, not better at writing but i have gotten better at that too but i've gotten better at being a an author because i think you have to there's a lot of things you have to learn, uh, not just about writing, but about what it means to be an author, how to respond to criticism, because you get a, a boatloads and boatloads of it, how to respond to publishers, how to respond to editors, all that kind of stuff. There's so much of not just the writing part of it that is uh, like you could teach a class. I'm surprised nobody does. Maybe they do. I want to know. But if I would ever teach a college course, a uh, creative college course, I want to teach about creative writing. I would teach about being a professional writer and, and what that means and, and how to interact. And that's kind of what I do, you know, with that podcast I did, Dark Word, is I had these writers come on and we talk about writing and publishing and editing and dealing with lawyers and editors or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot so it's a it's a huge accomplishment to to write a to write something. But um anyone can do it. It's just willpower and perseverance and having a, an idea worth writing about uh, uh i have i have like i'll have like the root of an idea and then it yeah. just goes blah and then yeah. I, i'd lost Whoops. i get like i i don't remember what it was i was i know i had a good thing when i started and now i'm three pages in and i don't know who these people are anymore yeah and to just just to keep people alive just have them live a life just the, the through line of a life. Oh, my characters don't. My characters don't. Live. <laughs> I don't believe yeah, that. Sometimes. <laughs> well, they live. They live in bit. some ways. Oh, yeah. and then they. Yeah, and <laughs> then, then they, they die. die. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Eric, I wanted to ask. Um, so, how did you get into like narrating audiobooks? I was uh, I was in the high tech industry, the beginnings okay. of the internet, starting in like the nineties. Then I did that for a long time, and then I got to a point where I was, uh, uh, like, developing the uh, education for really, like, high-level tech stuff. Um, and at that time, you would write a whole PowerPoint presentation of these new things, and then you would write all the text that goes with them, and then you would read the text so that you could deliver to somebody as an e-learning and they could sit at their desk and learn about the new thing or the new thing that the new thing does. Um, I did that for a while until somebody said, you know, everybody likes the way you read these. Could you just read these? Like instead of developing anymore, could you just, we have this room for you with a microphone. Could you just read these? And I was like, yeah, I guess I'll do that. So I did that You're for a couple of years. Uh, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, while I was, while I was developing other, trying to get other stuff done, but like my nine to five for four years was reading e-learnings, which wow. is how you develop. Um, Cause it's tiring. It's really hard. Reading an audiobook is not a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. It tires the hell out of me. Um, but that was like training 
for actual audiobook reading. Um, then a larger company bought our company, and that larger company said, we don't want voices on our e-learning anymore. So mm -hmm. that was the end of that road. Um, and nobody was really happy about that uh, because you would have to learn. Now you got to read. You got to read everything. This like super dry, just the driest stuff in the universe. And you got to sit and just try and absorb it just through your eyeballs. Yeah. I don't understand. <clears throat> it's miserable. Um, so I got laid off after 25 years. I got wow. laid off and I, I stopped working in, in tech and then just talking to my wife. I was like, you know, I think I think I, I'm at a point where I could probably start. Uh, it took a couple of years, but, you know, things are starting to roll now. So that's awesome. That's that's more or less what happened. And you do get you said you do uh, games and. Uh, yeah, video games and, and, animation. and animation. Nothing big, stuff, nothing yeah. that anybody would know. But, you know, yeah. It's it's all a process. It's all trying to build a resume and then trying to, I, I guess the, I've discovered that the biggest part of all of this is uh, <clears throat> if you ever work with somebody one time, try to leave them with the taste where they'd want to work with you again, you know, not just as the, in the quality of whatever you produce, but try not to be a, a dick, you know, mm -hmm. try to be yeah. a halfway decent person do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it you know adhere to a schedule uh if somebody sends you an email respond to the email kind of like you know <laughs> business you know i think phil when you were talking about how do you like go through the process of actually being a writer i, I yeah. mean a lot of that is you got to be a good business person oh yeah no it's your you're the ceo of your own business for sure i mean i uh you know i wanted to say something about I had, I had, when you're talking you were talking about the dry stuff so there's this one time and this is back when i was working in film and tv so i was driving all over the state and i was listening to a lot of audiobooks at this time and uh there was this book and i won't call out the book but it was very uh epistolary it's so and it was all it was emails so a lot of the book was emails between the characters. So the author, the narrator, sorry, was reading the emails, but they were reading the entire email starting with to, to yeah. from, subject. And so it would be like to Davenport 46, quit yahoo.com from Sarah four two seven eight seven two four at AOL dot com. Subject R E colon the night from the thing. And then I'd be like, oh my god, <laughs> read the fucking email. And then they would read the email. And then they would go like the next like they read the email, the email would be like 10 and seconds. The response. Yeah. And then they'd be like, Sarah four seven two. And I was like, I'm gonna a scream i was like losing my mind because i did yeah, want to know what happened in the story but i was like if i have to hear this these email headers one more time i'm gonna i'm gonna drive this car off the road into a into a into a into a cliff off a cliff into a gully and i'm gonna laugh while i burn and my the broken limbs and i'm burning and la laughing because i'm free of the audiobook so what? my only point is if you ever get into that situation be very mindful of that i don't know how you circumvent it though you have to well read see the page, that's right? i i would have to ask i i would bring it up i'd talk to the publisher but like i was talking to a friend of mine this about, is a major big five yeah. publisher by oh yeah, yeah, yeah not some indie thing i would i would totally be like this this isn't going to make any sense and the reason why is um the people that i was talking to yesterday about doing an audiobook is like when you're reading an audiobook you you have to you every single word has to yep. be the word that was there and that's yeah. not how we read for enjoyment right when when you're reading a book and just reading for enjoyment your eyes would roll right over that stuff and just get to yep. the meat you wouldn't give that a, a half second right. of time i wouldn't um, even look at it and and your brain would fill in even if you're reading yeah. through a sentence we don't yep. we don't read like literally read every word that's in front of us 
mm-hmm. we're getting the context and we're understanding what's going on and your brain fills in a bunch of stuff. I can't do that. I got every yeah. word that Phil wrote. Yeah. I have to say every word that Phil wrote. That's why it's so tiring. Yeah. Um, but there, there have been a couple of situations where it's like not awkward to read it, but it's so awkward to say it. And mm-hmm. I've had to ask. And sometimes yeah. they'll go back to the author and the author will be like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You're right. Just if you could just truncate it, can you just make it like a little bit, just say something so it's, uh, it's clear what's going on. I'm like, yeah, that's totally cool. But then other times the author's like, uh, that's what I wrote. So, you yeah. know, that's, that's gospel, bro. That, yeah, <laughs> you don't, you don't change what I wrote. Okay. I'm like, okay, yeah. that's okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just telling you it's going to sound weird to yeah. listen to it. And I'm trying to give you the best end product possible, but I'm going to do what you want, bro. I think, hey, didn't you or didn't you ask, did we have a, any back and forth? Didn't they come up during Gothic? I can't remember. I can't remember if we actually had like an, I I, don't, I, I asked because I remember one narrator asking me a couple of things about like, oh, I know what it was. I was, and I don't know if you and I corresponded about things like that, but I remember I was, a, a guy was reading, um, uh, uh, oh, uh, the narrator who did Beneath the Pale Sky. <clears throat> and there's a story in Beneath the Pale Sky called Atticus. And um, it's about this, like, which is like this Greek, or I'm sorry, Egyptian term. But, um, and he was like, do, it's technically, how do you pronounce it? How would you like it pronounced? And I was like, like, Atticus. And he's like, well, technically it's pronounced Atikias or something like that. But, and I was like, well, I don't really care, but uh, do whatever you feel, <laughs> do whatever you want. Um, but, because I could, you know, I could be wrong. I'm never, I'm, I'm usually am, but I, but that was in a situation where a narrator contacted me and asked, which I thought was very nice of them to do. And I was kind of like, I don't, I really don't care. Whatever, you, whatever you think is best is fine. But, um, but yeah, they were trying to pronounce a very difficult word. I'm, I'm sure that comes up if you're pronouncing like Greek or, you know, whatever. I don't know if I've ever you ever had to deal with some like ancient language popping into your. <laughs> The ancient Egyptian sex the, scenes. The best thing, <laughs> right? The best thing that happened in Gothic, for me, from 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 my performance standpoint, was uh, Miss Montresor uh-huh. started speaking French, obviously with a French accent. And oh, I was that's told, what we talked about. I Sorry. was told specifically, no, she's got a French accent, so you better figure it out. I figured it out, and then later on. You say specifically, she says with her perfect American accent. And I was like, right. oh, oh. I, the, I just recorded you. 200 pages. Yeah. I'm just sort of talking in this stupid French accent. I got to go back and re record it all in like perfect English. No, 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 no. I, oh, I was okay, just good. like, you know, while she was in one environment, she decided mm-hmm. to talk that way. And then when she got over here, she changed, and I still yeah. left her. I left her with a little bit of, of Something. a lilt. But yeah, man, I was, I was, I jumped up and down. I was so <laughs> happy. Like, Thank you. Yes, that was the that yeah, was the part I, where Eric, Eric, Eric texted me and said, "Can you write into the book that she has a perfect American accent because this French accent is killing me?" Please, for the love of God. Yeah, and I was yeah like, Eric, you got it, brother. I'm just gonna add it right there. I'll throw it. As long, and that's it. Was three it's words. A quick fix. Yeah. Yep. With her perfect American accent. Thank you, Philip. Yes, I wrote Rapture. I wrote Rapture into uh, yeah, Travel with Strangers. So yeah. let's talk about this right now. Let's we're all on the we're all on the phone. Um, Mitch, how do you pronounce Saison? Saison? Saison. Saison. Yeah, Saison. Yeah, Saison. But okay. that's gonna no, come up. But but with uh, not that Eric's doing the... that because nothing's confirmed. I'm just saying. Yeah, right. Just in case. Just in case. Way. Yeah, but so the beer, the beer in Chardonnay with, with strangers is called Chessere, Chessere, whatever. Um, is it, but I, it's, I didn't remember writing it in that yeah, complicated. Is, yeah, because oh, okay. you you wrote yeah, it's Chessere spelled Cezanne, but everybody says Cesar because it's oh C E S A R E. Yeah, so but it's Eric, Cesare. If, if, Interesting. Yeah, Chessere. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Caesar as C E S A R is E right? C E S A R E. What yeah. what's the uh what 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 language is that or what what so I so what's the etymology it's, it's, of that or 
It's, I could be pronouncing it wrong, but um, it's a reference. Well, now you're to... screwing him up. Now he's gonna look bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> well you, then you, we can just. You guys put have our already heads said <laughs> four or five different things for this same. He'll figure. Oh, he'll figure I, it out. Uh, Phil, beer. Beer. Bro. Phil yeah. is the just arbiter. Phil is the god of the universe. Yeah, uh, whatever yeah, book we're talking about exists in whatever that's you right. say the pronunciation is that's what the pronunciation or it's it's is. the Cesar character Ray, however they pronounce it yeah Cesar Ray says yeah but he yeah but it's, it's an internal dialogue if i remember correctly or it might even yeah. be omniscient narrator i'm not sure i, I think it might be omniscient narrator so it's yeah it'd be the way yeah. i would say so is it yeah, Cesar Ray it is. saison is that correct yes Cesar Ray spelled saison yeah Cesar Ray what <laughs> Pull that down. Chess that are, it's so if I want to be Don't extra start rolling your R's and shit. I, I'm That's, rolling that. Shit. Wait, you, did you say that Chess somebody that says it Chess with a perfect American accent? <laughs> yeah. How, how do, we can we can edit the the the, the type a. right? Chess at a spelt stays on. Spelt. Spelt. Yeah, it's a it, is, that's a wheat. Is, spelt is oh, a oh, it's an ancient wheat. Yeah, it's just a wheat. So what's the like best spelt. English uh, translation of that? Of spell is just spell. That's like spelled. Chesare spelled. Chesare, yeah. The whole thing. Spelled. Chesare Saison. spelled. Yeah. Saison. What's the what? Yeah. The, what does it all I mean? What does that mean? That what is? So saison is the style of beer that it is. Spelt okay. is like the the special wheat, wheat that I use for it. So okay. it's like. So that's what differentiates it from like just a normal saison that uses like you know your base malt and wheat. So it's like a different right. type of wheat. So the has, shit that yeah. I use at home, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then Chesare is just the name. So it's a, it's a reference to uh, like one of the first horror movies ever made in the twenties because everything that I do is like oh. a reference to the twenties. Um, so Chesare was is a character from the movie The Cabinet of Doctor Caligari. Hmm. Oh, okay. Like a, yeah. So if you look at the label, it's like, it's it's basically the, uh, it has scenes from the movie on the label, um, but it's like the main poster, it's like image. But this so has, he's like holding this has like down. a zombie. That's like a zombie. Yeah. On so it. so that's actually that's from a, another movie in the twenties uh, called Journey into the Night. Uh, so that's like a, a reference to that. Is that a zombie? Oh, what is, what, you, what is it? I can't see it. Is it a bird? Oh, oh, now I can say, yeah. Is that the wait? The, like, what it's, is no? That? It's the it's the girl from uh, Night of the Living Dead. Oh, oh there you that's go. Now awesome. I can see it. Yeah, oh, now yeah. Can there you go. That's, that's very cool. Tight. Not quite as far back on, as the twenties. That but, should be on a beer yeah. label. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be a good. Yeah, one. Every, everything that I do for Rapture is like twenties based, like a, a reference to something in the twenties. Like the sour beer is called Symphony Not, of Sour, but it's a it's Nosferatu on the label and it's called like Nosferatu is called a symphony of horror. And so I call it symphony of sour and it's like, so what is the Jeff word? The Jeff word is an allusion (laughs) to, well, Jeff is just very old. So right. Surely he he was born in the twenties. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. He's. Well, I I actually, so, so that beer, you know, it's the Jeff word style, but I, I had to tell Jeff, I, to fit it with my branding, I had to change the name. So it's, it's a reference to The Sound and the Fury by Faulkner, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's called The Stout and the Fury, which is just a, an incredible oh. name that I came up with. That is a uh, good name. Brilliant. Sound yeah. and the Fury is my favorite book, you know. <laughs> no, it is not. The yes, Magus is. is. No, it's not. Is it really? The Magus is one of my favorite books. Wow. Okay. So this the no Magus is not my favorite, favorite book. It is one of my favorite yeah. books. Sound and the Fury oh, okay. is my favorite book. Is it really? Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, written in the twenties. Hmm. Yeah, that I don't know. That. Yeah, that I don't know. I would have guessed. You know what? It, honestly, I would have guessed like thirties or forties, but it comes in. Like, so. Yeah, I didn't know fog. Yeah, like, what do I know? Um, Anyways, enough about rapture. Anyway, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> the reason we're here, Eric. I, I have I have many questions because I mean I spent eight hours with your voice. Um, and it was wonderful. Like some of the best eight hours I've ever spent in my life. Don't um, tell your wife that it's really well. Sad. I mean, she's that's, she's that's, she's not going to watch this. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it was it's it a safe sad. space. Yeah, it's okay. Mm-hmm. We're we're all. I'm. It's okay. Uh, but I have to ask how how many times did you read Gothic? Um, how did you come up with 
Tyson's voice, um, which is also another thing, uh, Philip, that I wanted to ask you, because this book has so many references to like famous authors and like, um, and so I, I kind of wanted to know who you would like attribute Tyson to the most. Um, because I, there was a lot of like McCammon references, Straub, King, obviously. Um, so yeah, there's, there's many, I have a bunch of questions, but so that's my question to you, Philip. And then Eric, yes. How did you come up with Tyson? How many times did you read Gothic? Well, I'll yeah, let Philip, Eric we'll, answer. we'll start with, I'll, okay. you want me to start? Well, yeah, you Tyson, start. I feel like yours is quick, quicker, maybe not quick. I, and I won't make it long. Tyson is definitely, is not any one author. He's, he's very much his own creature um he is very envious of of king obviously uh i have a lot of fun with his envy of of king um people have asked if he's you know um a mccammon because of the horse historical fiction mm -hmm. thing the answer is no he's really he's really a standalone guy um i he's not like He's not me thinking like I don't even know any of those guys. I wouldn't be able to imagine what they would think or say in any situation. Um, I only know what they've written. So he's really his own guy. I would say, if anything, you know, he's just sort of like um he's just like a frustrated old man, really. And uh mm -hmm. and um and that was kind of where I started. And then because I, I really pray a lot on that, like frustration and envy. Like he even says at one point in the book, like he, I think Tyson in the book is six three, and <laughs> I yeah. King is, and King is six four. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He's an inch taller. So, um, so yeah, but no, he's really he's he's just he's a he's a pure imagination. He's um, so he, he really honestly, I mean, I I, I would know if I'm saying it, but he's really just pure imagination. And that's cool. Um, yeah, but he exists in that world. There was a scene I wrote in the book that I ended up cutting. Uh. I still have somewhere I can send it to you at some point, but where an earlier draft where he's at the party, the birthday party. And I, I must burn through 20 writers. I mentioned everyone from Ellen right. Dallow to Victor Laval to Laird Barron, to Paul Tremblay, to Josh Mallerman. I just like, I just had so much fun That's writing awesome. that scene. And then I turned that scene in and they were like, you got to, you got to pull that back. No, yeah, because like, there are like, a okay. couple, couple of references in that scene. To yeah, some, to yeah, some yeah there are. Like, I think Joyce Carol, like George, Joyce Carol, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, and I, uh, but yeah, they were like, and I was fine with. I, I knew they were going to say that, so I was, but I was kind of, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was kind of having a lot of fun writing it. Um, but yeah, somewhere in my hard drive, I still have that scene with all the original. Oh, Joe I love Hills to read that. Joe, Joe, I don't know if Joe Hill made the final cut or not, but Joe Hill yeah, was in the I, scene. I have this at one point. This old arc, but I don't think it's it in might. There. It might be in there. Maybe I don't know. this I don't was the first what... one that I read, and then I reread it via Eric. Yeah, it was it actually too. my. It was actually my old agent, not my current agent, my second agent, um, who was the one who told me to pull that pull it back. So I, it may have been rewritten before I made that yeah. arc, but but yeah, Joe Hill was in there. Um, That's cool. I, yeah, so it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. That scene was kind of like I really. So I kind of went like took it went too far, but then I ended up pulling it pulling it back and just having the occasional reference. But yeah, no, he's he's nobody. He's just Tyson Parks. You know, he's his own guy. Br branching off that real quick, and then Eric, I'm gonna get to those questions I asked you. Um, did you did you have a chance to kind of vent your own frustrations as a writer through Tyson? Because um, I I mean this book is so much fun. Um, so I didn't know if you got to have fun with like, you know, any um, like writer's block or because I know that Tyson kind of talks about that kind of stuff. Like, did you get to vent anything with that? You know, when I wrote Gothic, I hadn't really. The only thing I had published was. I think Behold the Void. Mm. Um, oh, OK. And, and maybe a novella, maybe, you know, secondly, you know, you know, a couple of novellas, but but yeah, but. So I was really, I know, so the answer is no, because I really had, I wasn't, I hadn't sold a book yet, you know, a novel yet. Yeah, you I weren't, hadn't, yeah, you weren't I, jaded I wasn't, yet. I was totally unknown. Um, yeah. Uh, and I originally wrote Gothic as a novella um, for Beneath the Pale Sky. That's right. Yeah, I and remember then, you saying that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, and then pulled it out and expanded it into a novel. So, um, 
So no, not really, because I really and no, and, and as far as like just the writer frustrations, like writer's block for no, it was really more about um I think if anything carried through was some of the stuff about maybe the pressure of mm. writing something saleable, uh the pressure yeah. of writing something good. Um I think you might mention a reviewer or two, um, in, in not a nice way, but um <sighs> no, but there's little 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 pieces here and there um yeah that that they came from probably my own experiences but as far as like him being in the agency or his publishing dilemma or you know the, the working with the big publisher and the advance and all that kind of stuff all that stuff was just i just i just made up um having, mm-hmm. having it never really actually had that experience myself at that time um yeah this is probably four or five years ago now so um yeah so You're no so, yeah so that was all I was just a pup. And so that was yeah. all stuff that I just like, made up. I did have my agent. Um, she did read a lot of that stuff. Or she read all of it, but she read a lot of those um, sections more closely as it pertained to publishing and mm. publishers and advances and remainders and all that kind of thing. And she corrected a lot of it for me because I didn't know um, yeah. really. So it's all pretty, it's all solid information, but it's not based on experience at that. No. Wow. So, That's yeah. cool. I mean, it's, it's great. Yeah. You, you I would not it. have guessed that at all. Yeah, Never. No. Um, so Eric, now to you, I'm dying to know how do you do what you do? Do you read the book all the way through first? Yeah. You, how many pages like, do you read at a time? Yeah. I want to add my question to the mix. So go ahead. No, Phil, sorry, I'm, but... I'm the question person. You just sit there and look pretty. I know. I know. Okay. I know. And drink my scotch and shut up. My <laughs> yes. Drink your scotch and shut up. I'll take care of it. Sit in the background, Phil. What are you doing? Um, um, yeah. Yeah. We got to know. I read it through from, from beginning to end first, but oh, not, okay. but not like with a magnifying glass. You take notes like yeah. tricky section, yeah. weird yeah. word. Yeah. Like that. Okay. And, okay. and as, yeah. as the, as the people are are forming in my head, <clears throat> I take note of of what you're saying, the descriptors that you're using, um, and just go through and build, you know, uh, a, a sketch of every character. Sure. Um, but not 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 like really bearing down hard, like trying to get more of a pencil line sketch in my head. Some people don't work that way. Some people like to really pull everything apart and know exactly what they're going to do before they start talking. I don't really like to do that. I like to have more of a, an idea of where I'm going and then what happens kind of happens unless it doesn't work. Uh, the Tyson voice, speaking of Stephen King, I mean, you'll notice Tyson has a bit of a higher pitched voice that is directly related to Stephen King. That's awesome. That. That's awesome. Yeah. Stephen King's right. got a higher voice. I thought, than I would... thought the voice was perfect. Yeah. Uh, and you get a lot of, you get a lot of mileage out of that. Cause you can ring, you can ring some sadness out of mm. that. And Tyson really, fucking, he really fucking gets sad, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. hard. It's I, hard. I believe um, he's been called mopey a lot. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't Self really. Pitying. Yeah, I didn't dig. I've seen some people review. That is real. That's real writer stuff, by the way, Mitch. That's all that yeah. like self self pitying and self flagellation. Yeah, that's that's writer psychology, one hundred percent coming through. Yeah, I've seen that a, a, a couple of times where people are like he was so like and mopey is is I think miserable I, I or mopey yeah. that word and he was like I'm like welcome to writing, baby. Self defeating, right? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> You gotta have a guy, <laughs> gotta have a, a guy hit bottom before he's willing to jump on that particular train. You gotta have a reason why he wants to get involved and stay involved. And mm-hmm. um, the desperation but, had to come through. Yeah, yeah, time. yeah, yeah. The thing. So then, as far as like, so what did you want to know, Phil? Like, how many pages I? I oh yeah. So my question page? was, my question was, yeah. So how many pages do you get through? you know, in a session, I don't know if you do multiple sessions a day, if you take breaks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I like, but like in one, in, in one sitting, how many pages do you try and get through? Or is it like chapter, like a chapter or two chapters or how, like, depends. I know you don't want to, you don't want to stop mid chapter, right? Cause you want to keep the same. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
I'm, assu- I'm, I'm assuming. I don't know. Yeah. It, no, you're you're completely right. Um, and leaving the room and coming back into the room, it, it's never going to be exactly the same. Just the yeah. tone in the room changes. But then, you know, uh, engineers can do a lot with that. But because I find it so tiring, it's 20 or 30 pages a day usually mm. is that sounds like a lot yeah but not not I for mean, not for people who are really like well seasoned they're 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 completing entire hours in a day i don't wow i don't really see how <clears throat> but i can't do it so if i get a good um 20 minutes of actually like finalized of audio yeah. audio in a day uh i feel like 20, 20 to 20 to 40, somewhere in there. And it depends on the thing. You know, there, is, there were some parts of Gothic that just like, just flowed. And yeah. I, I, I didn't have to think about it. And I didn't have to uh, go back and self-direct. What I tried mostly to do is when any, when any time a human is speaking, I really, really try to like use the actor part of me so when a person mm. speaks they like really sound like a person actually speaking not a narrator reading what a person is saying you know it, it's it's a subtle it's a subtle difference that but, makes sense yeah um so that's about it yeah so there's a scene in which i i just brought up gothic <laughs> which is why my everything went very white um, yeah. But there's a scene. Uh, there's a scene in the book where he says, where he's pouring himself a scotch at the beginning of the book, and he says, uh, two fingers is a handshake, buddy. I need a hug." Because he he pours himself a little bit of scotch, and then he pours himself a little bit more scotch. Because he and he talks references how he went in. Uh, he written a short story where he told the, the bartender poured him a drink, and then he said. <laughs> Two fingers is a handshake, buddy. I need a hug. And he pours a little bit more. Do you remember that reading that part? Yeah. By chance. So can you read that part as Tyson or no? Like right now? Put you on the spot? Put him on the spot. Yo, this is what we do. Um I don't have I don't have the material in front of me. Oh. Uh oh. I know you I know you have an arc. Two fingers is a handshake, buddy. I need a hug. Hold on. Hold on. You can edit all this out. Get... Yeah. No, I'm contact? keeping everything in there. No, we got we gotta keep it all. Of course I got it. I got it somewhere. Unless unless I moved it. It's page twenty eight of the of the novel. Okay. And you don't have to do it if if I'm putting on this I'll tell you no, while you're now, now I feel like we have to. I can do I'll it. I'll tell too. you I'll tell you an anecdote while Eric's trying to find it. So I used to work for um as like much like Eric, I worked in technology when I was in my um in the mid nineties. And I once did a, um, I worked for House of Blues Entertainment and I was a producer for them. And I produced a lot of, uh, I was a content producer. So we produced concerts and interviews and stuff like that. And um, I used to produce stuff with like, the, I did stuff with The Cure, with Depeche Mode, with every, you know, all these Motley That's crew. awesome. Oh, where we'd bring them in a room and we'd do like an interview with them and we'd record it. We'd put it on the, the website. And this is like when streaming was just beginning. It was early days of streaming. And um, and anyway, so we had I had this idea, and uh, where I was going to have um, we had Black Sabbath, and um, we were going to do this hour long interview with Black Sabbath. And uh, I can't remember exactly why I thought of them. I think because they were big Black Sabbath fans. I think Ozzy had been on South Park, so I reached out to the South Park guys. And nah. um, Matt. Trey and Matt, yeah, and they were like they jumped at it. So Trey and Matt came in, and they interviewed uh, Black Sabbath. Um, in, at that the is in, awesome. here in Los Angeles, and I produced it. And somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, when he's somewhere, I have a I have a picture of me and Black Sabbath and Matt and Trey from South Park. Oh, but um, that's so cool. But the point is, of all of this, is that at the end of the interview, I said. To Trey, I said, "Hey, will you do um, like a station ID as Cartman, um, being like, hey, you're listening to hobblues.com, hobblues.com, you're listening to hobblues.com.' 
What um, year? What year are you talking about? This was probably. Um, I worked from House of Blues in ninety five to two thousand one. I think it's probably like probably like ninety eight. Oh, so he was, he was still doing the full on tight. Uh, yeah, yeah, they were still doing the Harmon voice. I, yeah, yeah, and it was interesting because he got. He was very nice. They were both very nice. Matt nicer. Trey was a little. Um, you can tell you was a little socially awkward, but he said, yeah. um, "He goes, man, I can't. I don't do that stuff like without." all the gear like there's like he's like it's all it's through like a it's like a whole like it goes through a filter and it's sweet it's like it's the whole thing it's not just me talking yeah. to the microphone and i was like oh okay well then don't don't worry about it anyway so now point being eric I, I don't want to put you on the spot i understand that sometimes it's like there's more to it than just well he TV. used to when they when they first started uh the carbon voice like yeah, yeah. everything all the time sounded like yeah. that. and he was destroying his throat and and when it became more popular uh they had to have a conversation he's like I, I can't i can't continue to do this it's just i can't do anything else for days yeah yeah after doing that so they quickly moved to a lot of like electronic they pitch everything up and have you guys watched that oh. that documentary they made the six days six, till air. Six days to air. Yeah. Have it's, you seen it, Philip? I, I love no, it. No, I've it's never heard of it. Incredible. They just they oh, show like the entire process of the making an episode. Yeah, they do the they whole, make yeah, every they do episode the whole, in six days. They do the whole episode in six days. Yeah. 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 No, I hope to, I didn't know. You need to watch it. Was I think it's on YouTube. I, my wife's a fan, so she. Oh, I love, love South Park. Yeah, that's how yeah. they keep everything as topical as it is. Yeah, it's. Right. I think South Park is. One of the best shows on TV. Yeah, it's still up there. Yeah. And so far, none of the people have been uh, almost arrested for keeping a lady hostage and, um, you know, sending inappropriate texts to underage. That's right. Girls. Yeah, that is right. Yeah, and that is why they're better than Rick and Morty. <laughs> Right. I, I, remember, I was like, uh, wait, what are we talking about? Well, I used to live in, uh, I used to live in, I used to live in Venice. Venice Beach. When I owned my bookstore in Venice Beach, and um, and uh, Trey bought a big house right in the heart of Venice Beach, and used to I used to bike by it every day on my way to my bookstore. Um, but yeah, I don't know where they, I don't know where they, I don't know where they reside now. But yeah, they were nice guys. I mean, I haven't. That was the only time I've ever actually dealt with them on a personal level. But Matt is definitely the guy who like runs every Matt's the guy <laughs> who like does everything. And then I think Trey is more of the, the brains behind the, uh, yeah. the operation or more of the, I don't know. He's more like, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't interface with anybody. <laughs> Matt interfaces with oh, everybody yeah. and Trey just kind of like comes in and does his thing. And then like leaves. You need to watch that documentary. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah. You'll see, yeah. You'll see all that. It's yeah. It's very good. I'll see if I can find, I have no idea where it'd be, but I'll see if I can find that photo. Is yeah, it Billboard yeah, magazine. I it. It's I mean, it's it should be on the somewhere out there on the internet. Surely. Really? Wow. I mean, Black Sabbath and the South Park creators. Surely that's on Google somewhere. That's it's, pretty, it was in, yeah. like I said, it was in Billboard, and um, and so and there's also a picture of me with like Depeche Mode and a picture of me with Secure somewhere off. They were all in Billboard back in the '90s, so those are floating around somewhere, I would imagine. Yeah, I, don't I uh, in the mid '90s, I was uh, in kindergarten. You were, you were, you were a right. You were. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say so, you were in a. I wasn't a allowed crib. to watch South Park. Yeah, you were in a crib because you're a child. You're a baby. Yeah. I was a. Ch I was a, a definitely a child. I was oh, going to say I was oh, a child alone with strangers, but I I wasn't alone right. with strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Child alone with strangers. What's that? <laughs> that sounds like the name of something. Nah, sure right, so not. We, it's a long name. So we got it. We got Eric out of having to do that line. Is that right? Oh hey, no, I, we're bringing it back. You just know, do anything. It, can you do anything in Tyson's voice? Can you just do Tyson's? Can you do anything? Can you say anything in Tyson's voice right now, or would it be too hard? I don't know. I don't want to do him a disjustice. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Like, I'm putting I, you on the spot. If but I did, hard. If, you, so I, 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 I mean, I could do. He's just uh, pretend mm. you're on the Tonight Show. 
And yeah. Jimmy Fallon turns to you and says, "Hey, do that funny thing, the thing you did with the Tyson voice." <laughs> Wait, you did a Jay Leno impression talking about Jimmy. <laughs> I don't, I'm not the voice guy, man. That's I can a, throw. That's I can Jay talk Leno. like a. I can talk like a Scottish milkmaid, and it would have been okay. <laughs> well, uh, hey, Eric, I'm we'll an amateur. Philip, we'll make Philip write something live for us. No, no, no don't it, don't do it. Make sure, it. Don't do it. Make sure. All right, Philip, write us a short story real quick. <laughs> but ready, um, go. It is interesting. And sometimes you hear when you listen to an audiobook, like I said, I don't listen to a ton of audiobooks anymore, but I do, I did listen to them a lot. And then you said that thing about room tone, it would be kind of, sometimes it'd be a little bit jarring because you would know when, and this is more of a producer issue than a narrator issue. But when you're listening to an audiobook and then you can like, there's a clean, there's a clean like cut. Like there's a clean, mm. even if it's mid chapter where it's like they're talking and you're like, and that's like, you're like a little bit louder. Or whatever yeah. and you're like oh mm -hmm. like it's just, it's a little jarring but that's like a mixer issue i always blame the mixers not the narrator but i was like oh man they obviously had to take a break right there it's it's an Going enormous it's enormous amount of of detail that you know somebody i i think there's a dude there's like a company who has to uh listen to everything that i'm saying while reading it and then come back and tell me the words that I said wrong. Oh, wow. And give me little, little samples of the things that I said that is not exactly what was written in the book. Uh, and then we have to go back and fix it all. So imagine being that guy. I think it's tiring to just like be focused on the words and have them come out of my mouth. He has to be reading and listening at the same time. Yeah. And these, these guys will pull out the most minute like you didn't have an s on the end of that word and it needed an s and from wow. a, from a performance standpoint i'm like yeah but that's the way a guy would say that you know a guy not everybody hits every sound and right. everything that they say right but okay you're right there's an s on the word and i didn't say the s so i will and go that's back the to it. And then do you have to do you, you you do everything you record everything independently, you don't have like a director. No. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Yeah, while you're, I know because animation guys do that. They have the director say, "Do it again, do it again, do it again," or whatever. Yeah, no, and they they they. It's not just. Uh, they also find the so then you give them like you give them like five or six takes of different phrases, and then they Frankenstein that all together into what you actually end up hearing. I don't have that luxury uh, when I'm doing an audiobook because time, oh, right, right, right. time is money. You know, you're only getting paid X amount of dollar per finished hour. So if it takes you six hours to do an hour, as opposed to four hours to do an hour, mm -hmm. you're like literally setting money on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so while I, I, I don't like, not having a director i prefer having someone that i can like bounce shit off of and then they say well just try to do it this way and i'm like oh mm -hmm. i didn't think of that and then i do it and it comes out better than what i would have done alone but that's not the way the audiobook industry works for the most mm -hmm. part unless you're george clooney or somebody like that yeah i'm actually surprised by that i i thought that it would be like you know somebody is giving you some type of direction i mean because so you it sounds it's like such you, get, a great you job. get post, you get you get comments and notes after you recorded a session or whatever. And you yeah, but they're not on. they're not performance notes, mm. right? They're corrections. They're they're specifically you didn't say this the way it was supposed to be or the way it was. Did written. you have Did you have a lot of that with Gothic or did you just no. kill it? <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't kill it, but it really wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. At all. That's awesome. So, That's great. So Gothic is like, as an audiobook, it's like 11, 10 or 11 hours, right? Something in that range. It's like eight, eight and change, or, right? Yeah, eight or nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like yeah, eight or nine. And then I, yeah, try, see, so Gothic is, I think, a 400 page novel. And, but it's really only like 90,000 words. So it's really, since it's saying page count really doesn't matter. Because right. yeah. page cuts all about how it's laid out. So I think it's four hundred three pages technically, but I'm pretty sure it's, I'm pretty sure it's. Uh, I think it's like ninety thousand words, 
um, versus uh. say a child don't always strangers, which is a hundred and sixty thousand words. Yeah, double. Yeah, twice. Gothic is. Which I would I would imagine would be daunting as a so Gothic is. <laughs> Okay, just open it. Gothic is eighty two thousand words. Yeah, I was gonna say on your on this arc it says about eighty thousand words. So right. So yeah. A Child Only Strangers, which is my next novel that's being adapted for audio, is a is literally is literally twice the the length. Yeah. It's two gothics. So you'd have to put you'd have for to the look viewers at those characters were you the yeah. narrator, say, for twice as twice the amount of time. That'd be quite a feat but also twice the fun you know yeah, well so so like anybody who ended up doing that the the length of the book it, it's really only gonna so if it took it took me like two weeks to do gothic um two actual like weeks like literally of, of working right weeks, yeah working if you took all your hours and smushed them into one period oh not no 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 not 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 like uh -oh. Not like oh, two, two weeks, calendar, two, calendar weeks. Two, gotcha, two, gotcha, gotcha. two weeks of working my working schedule. Gotcha. Um, but like when you're in, when you're inside of doing something, it's, it, it's hard to start. It's not hard to keep rolling. Mm, because right. once, once you're in the middle of something and you know who everybody is, like, it's really hard for me to find Tyson right now. Like, it's mm -hmm. really hard. Yeah, it's really frustrating that you're not doing it, Tyson's voice. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm frustrated too. I'm sorry. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not. But that's I interesting, wish I could just... Eric. No, you're good. You're good, Eric. Because it's it's the same. It's the same way as uh, same same way as a writer. The first, my wife will tell you because I complain about all that. The hardest part about writing any book or screenplay. Um, is is those is starting it is getting those first getting the tone getting the voice, understanding you know getting a sense of the world, the first chapter the first twenty thirty forty fifty page not sorry fifty but twenty thirty pages of a novel are easily, and always the first ten pages of a screenplay are always the hardest part of the process. Once you kind of like okay. Now I got the voice. Now I kind of know where we're at. I got a sense of the book. I got a sense of the characters. Now we can just kind of roll. So it's the same th same thing. Um, yeah. They, I'm sure it's very, very, very similar to what you go through as, yeah, a, yeah. as a narrator. You, get, you really have to get a feel for it. And then once you get the feel for it, you're off and running. Well, so like with using Tyson as an example, at the end, or not, not quite the end, but towards the end, he kind of gets to a point of he's like, I'm the man. Like I becomes right. Yeah. He I'm, I'm, a, I'm, on, I'm on top of everything. And yeah. you would think that that would be a very jarring, like, well, how do you go from Tyson being like, ah, oh, man. So like, get the right. fuck out. I'm going to tell you how, and it just, Fill my Coke. Yeah. It just, <laughs> yeah. it was just, it just made perfect sense. I knew exactly where he was. I knew where his, I knew where his head was. So, so he could mm -hmm. maintain his Tysonness but be that different version of him. And it, and it was very, it was very authentic because I've been living in the guy yeah. for, for weeks. Um, yeah. I, he I goes was, from the broken glasses over. and the spilling the papers. Mm. And then there's that scene, which is a personal favorite of mine where he's in with all the big wigs from the agency and he's pouring himself and he's pouring the Coke and then he sets the Coke down because it's, it's de fizzing, so he can pour in the more <laughs> coke. And they start to talk, and he's like, oh, "Wait, <laughs> they all wait." They're all, they're all sitting there waiting for the coke to be fizz, or can pour the rest of the coke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is one of my. I, I hope that makes it to some screen someday. Um, there's a book I wanted to mention to you because I I, I mentioned the audio books that I've listened to in the past, but there's one book that, and I was looking this up because I wanted to get the name right. And I are you familiar with um. Ari Fliakos, I'm probably destroying that name. Ari Fliakos, so. he does a lot of like big, like Random House books or whatever. But he did a book called The Knicks, um, by a guy named Nathan Hill, which is one of my, one of my like probably in the top like twenty books of all time. 
and um and that book he and he crushes it but he um but he doesn't and, you, and i thought of him earlier because you were talking about characters versus narration and he really just narrates he doesn't mm. do different voices he doesn't you know what i mean he doesn't get into all that he just kind of reads mm. the book but his um but he does it in such a way that you're you're still engaged and you're still yeah. fluent with you know, you're, you know you're still with what's happening but he but it's interesting because he doesn't do uh he doesn't really change um at least in this book uh he doesn't really change his range very much which i thought was interesting but but for whatever but he's like this fast talking kind of voice uh or you know, I know he's, he has a certain style to the way he narrates where you're just kind of like you don't have any choice but they kind of like you know what i mean keep is it, keep is, up it with them. Uh, is it first person the Knicks? no mm -mm. huh I, don't think... I, I could see that working totally from yeah person, he's an interesting person. guy he's done some he's done some different he's done some some books um he's done anyway i only mentioned it because i you, you you made that one comment about then i thought it's interesting because yeah normally even with stephen king when stephen king narrates his own books he he adapts his voice to try and like oh this person's a female this person's a male this person's a child um uh there's um and i thought um the guy who did the actor who did King's um The Stand. Find, uh, no, no, no. Well, I don't think he did the stand. But the guy he did um the Mercedes the Mercedes books. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And he he does a really I've heard people said his female voice and noise them, but I actually thought it was actually pretty good. And I would imagine that would be because so here's an here's a, here's a question for you. So I've I was sent I won't say which book or anything because I don't want to, but I was sent some op, some auditions for one of my books and I got to choose between like six different narrators and they each read like a passage or whatever, um, the same. And it was interesting because you'd be listening to the person speak and they would be like, you'd be like, oh, that sounds, that sounds nice. Like they're talking and they're talking. And then they would do like a opposite sex voice so if it's a woman she'd be doing a man or a man doing a woman and you just be like whoa whoa no 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 like because yeah. it'd be so extreme where you're like you you know you're you don't need to over sell it to that like where it'd be like you know a woman talking she'd be like and then he took it the flowers to the day like i must have got coming and you're like no 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 you don't like not all men talk like a bear or whatever but do you find that <laughs> difficult when you're like the nuance of a young woman, an older woman, like, you know what I mean? Like a young man, like when you do those variations, do you think of it as like, do you put yourself in, like, are you thinking of it as like, I'm acting as this person or is it just kind of like, how, like, is it more technical? How do, how do you, how do you approach that? Especially, that especially up? with women. And I'll, I'll tell you a very, a very tricky situation that I just went through and I'm not even now entirely sure how it's going to go. Um, mm -hmm. but every, everybody that, uh, I voice every character that I voice, I try to find like, who is the actual person? Mm -hmm. So I find that my, my women voices are not, uh, they tend to be a little, a little more airy. Uh, they're lighter. I, I try to change inflection a little bit and, and speed and just, just enough to differentiate. But um, I, I very rarely, I just did a book where I had to do a bunch of teenage girls. And I'm not only am I trying to honor the whoever it was who wrote the book, but every yeah. character in every book, I try to honor every person as their... A real person so unless it's a fantasy novel um which really gives you you know you can right then you got trolls and whatever. yeah <clears throat> totally dwarves different. or whatever yeah anything based in any kind of reality that you 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 don't want to be doing voices that are too big because Character people don't really talk like that 
So the trickiest thing that I've ever done, w women voices, I'm not, I don't love it, but I feel like I've figured out a way to do it. Mitch, you there, what did you think? And don't uh, worry about hurting my feelings about no, the, the female I, voices in the book. I thought you did a great job with the female voices. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't even, it didn't skip a beat for me. I thought it was great. Yeah, that that's cool. That's, I mean, that's yeah. the best thing you could possibly say. Oh yeah, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah has the most dialogue, and I don't think mm -hmm. I don't think Violet has Violet some. Has very yeah. very little. Violet has some. I got a question about Violet, but I'll ask it in a second. So I just did a true crime novel uh, about a DC prosecutor and the murder of an African American mother and her daughter. Now this prosecutor's a white dude living in DC and he wrote the book and it's written from his perspective. So he's the primary narrator. Uh, right. It's most, it's mostly first person, but the majority of the people that he interacts with are African-American. Mm -hmm. So question then becomes, how do you differentiate between mm -hmm. my very obviously white guy voice, which fit with the main character? I don't think it's all that obviously white guy, but go ahead. Well, I, I, I feel pretty, <laughs> I feel pretty Caucasian. However, <laughs> um, and then all of these, all of these African American people who are, uh, maybe they're not named the actual people, but these are real people who really lived mm -hmm. and actually went through this real situation. Yeah. So you got to be like so cognizant of. Oh yeah. This mm -hmm. is an actual person. And then I'm doing like African-American ladies, like older African-American ladies. Yeah. And what I always, <clears throat> what I just, what I, what I try to do and where I'm coming from, and I think it was kind of like a way that I figured out how do I not be a cartoon? How do I not be video game? How do I not be that big, but still make things uh, different enough so people know what's going on is by just just trying to be like this is a person and mm. if you were going to explain to another person what that person said and what that person did you know try and get behind their eyeballs and like be who they really are yeah and i i don't i don't know i mean i tried so hard to be um I guess honorable is the only word that I could use for all yeah, of respectful these. is the word I use when I'm writing characters. Yeah. I'm not respectful that are not of my same background. I try yeah. and be respectful of other characters, you know? Yeah. Like the detective in your book, I didn't know until later he was, you probably don't want to He's say black. It yeah. it's, I don't know if that's a reveal. It seemed like a reveal no. to me. Because initially he's just mm. talking. He's oh, just I not saying black at the beginning. No, there's nothing. It's from his yeah. viewpoint, and he's just watching some stuff transpire. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. he's a detective. He talks like a detective. Well, guess what? For him, all the way through, he just talked like a detective. It yeah. was. He, yeah. It's referenced that he's a black guy. I'm like, he's I don't care. Young. He's, he's a detective. Sort of a little bit, a little young. Yeah, a little young. Yeah. Good looking young guy, yeah, black guy, yeah. Yeah, so, well, it's funny because when when Diana meets him, she's surprised that he's exactly. black, for yeah. example, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, because he doesn't sound like that. He doesn't come across that way. So I thought it all made sense. Mm -hmm. it, it, what? What? What happens with Violet? What? 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 what where do they go? What do they? <laughs> what do they Spoilers. do? What? <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna say who the you want, you is, want but yeah. you want to know what happens to the violet? Is that what you're asking me? Uh, I know you can't answer. Or are you doing dialogue? Are you asking or are you asking me a question? No, I no, he's asking, asking, yeah. I, I'm asking a question. Like, because what it's left with like, you know, well, they that's have an that scene. Answer. That's they an have yeah. answer. That's that that's in the sequel. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know what happens to her in the book. She might live, she might die. I don't know. But um <laughs> I'm going to put like a spoiler warning before anybody watches this. So. The um I didn't say where she was or what happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but... yeah, yeah, yeah. The um uh so speaking of all those different voices, 
the um i got i got a um my next book's coming out in july it's called boys in the valley and it's and it's um and it's being put up by nightfire and nightfire is doing the audiobook or tour with mcmillan whoever mcmillan's producing the audiobook and mcmillan reached out to me and they were like hey you know what kind of narrator are you looking for for this book and i was like well first of all whoever it is i feel terrible for because it's there are 30 characters in this book between the ages of eight and 80 um <laughs> most of them are kids uh and uh and they all have differentiating they all have to have differentiating voices because you need to know who who's talking um but there's probably like if you were doing like a playbill there's probably like 10 primary mm -hmm. children and i would say three primary adults mm -hmm. children um, of children in like the eight nine ten year old like between eight like and six teenager yeah Okay. So the youngest, youngest, youngest ones are like eight, and the older ones are sixteen. And then that goes. And so I was kind of feeling, I was like, I just, you need someone who can do. You need Eric of, Fox. That's you need a, right. Someone who can do a lot of nuance <laughs> with. Yeah. And some of them are Irish, some of them are American, some of them are English. Uh, there's like a possessed dude <laughs> that. that tears it up in one scene so there's a lot going on in that book and i felt really bad because i was like i don't know how one person does this book honestly but yeah i but see no that fire in eric's eye you you were saying 30 characters eric's right? like bring like, it on what else bring yeah on. yeah <laughs> well you know from talking about like uh the business of doing things you know um if somebody of your caliber were to say Listen, Tor Nightfire, I know a person who is more than capable of taking care Night of this caliber. book for me. <laughs> right. Uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're, a you're a caliber. You're a caliber. Yeah, you definitely. I'll mention it. But I was just saying, caliber. like, I, like that would be, like, really hard to do. Like, in my mind, when I'm writing, it's very clear what their voices sound like. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all very different. But um, we had, you had that kind of Oliver, you know, please, sir, can I have some more? You have that one guy. <laughs> and then you got like the more of the straight edge guy. And then you got more like the like, I don't give a shit guy. Um, and then you got like, but then there's a couple where they're like a little, I don't know what I would do, man. Because there's like, there's a, there are literally like, Mitch has read the book. There's literally yeah. like 15 different characters. There's a lot. In that book. But I, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I don't know because I'm trying. To, it's been a while since I've read it, and there's some um, scenes where they're all kind of talking across each yeah. other too, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I I never really got confused reading it, you know. Like I, I thought it was really well, no. clear. Um, but I'm saying as a narrator, though, could you imagine yeah, trying narrator. to come from unique voices? No. That's why I like Bartholomew I don't would do have it. a certain voice, and Peter yeah. would have a certain voice, and David would have yeah. a certain voice. But then you have like the twins, and you have Basil, and you have all. Yeah, I don't know, just. Finnegan and all the other guys. I don't know. Yeah. Seems like it'd be really. But anyway, Eric, I I think think challenge. Yeah. Would that be like a positive challenge? Like not not my book, but if you were like approached with like, look, there's 20 characters in this book, and they all have speaking parts throughout. Would well, that I be mean, like a I, fun challenge for you, or would you be like, I'm out? I can out. no 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 no. The the DC book that I just talked about, yeah. I don't even know how many characters were in it. And what sucked about it is it'd be like a person comes in and delivers a line or two to a jury or there another guy is talking to a cop and delivers a piece of information mm -hmm. um easily. and then you don't hear from him again and for like an hour and then you get to like a lot of them later. never come back a lot of them never yeah come back. yeah um so you know it's harder when like or i gotta figure out how this guy talks like right now and he's gonna say this thing and then yeah. i'm never gonna see him again and then there's going to so, be like six other guys that I have to do the exact same thing. And they can't all sound like the same guy, even yeah. though they're only going to be in the book for under a minute. Yeah. So how do you, how do you remember? Like, do you have like just clips or like that you go back to listen to whenever there's a scene coming up with like that character or what yeah, do you do to like keep it like, straight? Do you, remember, do you have a moment where you're like, oh, I got to bring 
is coming back now. So he, I haven't seen him in like a hundred pages. And now I got to remember how to do Jack's voice. Do you like go back and listen to what you did before? Or... Yeah. By the time uh, you can't see what I'm pointing at, I'm pointing at a, <laughs> a legal pad over here. As I'm doing a book, I'm, I'm compiling a list of adjectives. And I, I found that when I have the name and a list of adjectives and I can keep referring back to the same, it like builds a compartment. Oh, wow in my head where that guy mm-hmm. okay i know who that guy is um wow that's crazy the yeah i guess so the only the only tricky uh the the voice of the voice of god bad, the voice of bad in your book um he wasn't around a lot but he had a very specific in in my book yeah in, in gothic? gothic yeah in who ben no bad. No, 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 bad. The, the bad, the bad, the bad of the 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 embodiment of the desk. The de- oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he wasn't around a lot, but he had a very specific the blind guy. Yeah. The yes. blind guy. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yep. Uh, the only voice I had a problem with. Cro- uh, Cro- yeah. Crochy. Crochy. Cro- Crochet. Yeah. Cro- 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 Crochy. Mitch, 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 don't get all like Cesare. <laughs> Dude, I'm doing it. Okay. It had to. It's Crochy. One... It's, 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 I'm talking like I'm from New York. Hey, it's Crochy. It's Crochy. Okay, move it on. Depended, it hey, depended on who was talking about it. <laughs> some people did say yeah. Crochy, and some people yeah, were like uh, Crochy. Right. So, I mean, yeah, blame it, Eric. Okay. It depends on who's. But the, okay, the, only yeah, person, yeah. the only person I had a problem with going back to the scene with the Coke was the younger executive oh, right. who tried to tell oh, Tyson. Tim. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for some reason, yeah. I had a really, really hard time finding that guy. I should have come in and done that voice nuts. for you. I'd be like, <laughs> you can't say this stuff, man. This stuff don't hey! fly no more. <laughs> that would have been great. Special guest star. A little Special cameo. Guest star is. <laughs> Uh, you can't he did say end this up kind of stuff in a book anymore, man. Don't yeah, he did end up water. sounding That's like why that. my James you know what, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah, sort of my, I don't know why. His boss, no problem. Everybody else, really, no problem. He's the only one. Interesting. Like, fucking, yeah. I would have thought he'd been. The, I, I would have thought he would have been really easy because he's such a caricature. But yeah, I, I know. Guess. I know. He's a very two-dimensional character in my book. I'm not afraid to say it. He's supposed to be. He's a little twit. Yeah. And yeah. he comes and goes. <laughs> yeah. Tyson thumbs him like a bug, yep. and then they move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you do Billy as a British, as a British accent? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you Not like a, you know, a, 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 like a New York British. Yeah. You've been in New York. What are you doing over there? Oh, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, yeah. it wasn't like that. He just kind of had like a. <laughs> I kind of wish he was now, though. That was awesome. <laughs> It would have changed the tenor, I think. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and during some of those end, during some of those end scenes when Billy, you know, when 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 stuff starts hitting the fan a little bit, um, as it were. Yeah. I imagine those scenes would have been interesting to do because you're dealing with people in trauma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Without giving no spoilers, spoiler free, but so like, you know, the escalating tension, obviously, uh, some pain involved and and again the surrealism comes back in hardcore yeah. like yeah. what is actually mm-hmm. on those on those and those yeah. and those yeah. uh yeah and the, what i call the fake the fake climax the yeah. false climax of the i'm really yeah. looking forward to the book club that we do so we can get in the spoiler chat little plug for a future video oh um, we should make sure eric's in that that'd be fun if oh yeah i was to gonna that. say eric i would it would be awesome if you can come to that i can tell you uh, once a person has narrated a book there are very few people who will have read it as precisely as i have yeah, yeah. do you ever you never forget a book I, you narrate i would imagine no yeah. no it's in yeah, so how many times do you think you've read Gothic, if you could say? If you could put a number on it. Twice? Twice, yeah. twice all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. I've read Gothic. I've probably read go- I have probably read Gothic um 20 times. Yeah. I would say. From beginning to end. Yeah. I can't. I I I can't. That's why editing is the that's why editing is the worst 
thing in the world because you are not only are you rereading the same story for the tenth time, you're rereading your own work for the tenth time. So yeah. you're judging oh, yourself while you're yeah. while you're editing. Yeah, it's I hate editing. It's the it's the it's the absolute worst part of writing because uh, yeah. you're just like going, oh, this this is bad. This sucks. No one's gonna want to read this. This is terrible. <laughs> I'm gonna go burn this in the fireplace and just move on. Um, <laughs> And for and me, it, it, it stops feeling. Read, you're really going that way. It stops feeling spontaneous. Mm. You know, if if you read it too many times. Yeah. So I try. Uh, give it one good read, read through it, laser focused. Really, never have to read it again. Um, but you know that's not how I read. Like you were talking about McCammon, I just finished. Uh, boy's life for i think probably the third time that i've read boy's life and you know that's why i like that's why i want to be doing this because that's the genre it's the genre that yeah i, I was gonna say like like what do you typically gravitate towards who are your favorite writers i'm, I'm, I'm also a... also on top of that mid question i'm sorry do you do you read okay you don't vocalize while you're reading okay because i write mm. i judge Oh, in my head, in my yeah, head. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yeah. I, I, I I'm understand. Constantly there are judging people, everything I'm reading, like as I'm reading my own stuff. Yeah, I'm always, yeah, I'm always vocalizing in my head. There are people who yeah. don't have that internal monologue, like they don't hear anything in mm-hmm. their head. They don't, they, they don't vision. Yeah, weird. They don't envision a scene. <laughs> it's just oh. the words come into their, and they just are <laughs> stored. I'm like, how do you? No, everybody's talking all the time. Um, can I say? Can I say one thing, and then I want you to answer Mitch's question about what you yeah. gravitate toward yeah. as far as reading is concerned. But and Mitch, I, I think I don't know if you saw this interview, maybe, or maybe you did. I apologize. Maybe you did. We the I was <laughs> doing an interview with Cynthia Paleo. Paleo, you know what I'm talking about? The uh, author. Uh huh. No, I didn't. Yeah. But do you know what I'm talking about? She did no, uh, Children of Chicago. The Children of Chicago. Was her, I don't think was, I saw this one. No, no, but you know, I'm t- do you know the author I'm just talking oh, about? Oh yeah, Cynthia yeah, Palaio? yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So she's a she's a she's a wonderful horror author. Anyway, but I was I was doing I was on a podcast with her for something I can't remember what it was or who was doing it, but obviously because I'm stupid. But <laughs> she was taught. She has um a specific uh condition, and I, she said what it was, and I I don't remember the thing. She cannot visualize anything. A fantasia. Oh. And yes, a fantasia. She has no she yes. doesn't have the ability to, to um visualize in her mind. So everything that That's she wild. writes, which is the exact op- we were talking about this on the podcast, which is the exact opposite of the way I write, because I literally write what I see. That's the only yeah. that's the way I write. But she writes, she's she does she can't do that. She can't visualize a scene and write what she's seeing or what wow. how would a big of how a building looks or how a tree looks mm-hmm. or how a person looks. She has to kind of do it all a different through a different kind of like, you know, part of the brain, um, hmm. which which I just which is a, is not is neither here nor there. Only an interesting anecdote. Yeah, and that's yeah, exactly is. that's that's what I was talking about. There are people who read, and that's how they read. They don't yeah. see the story going. They don't on. see don't it. Yeah, hear the voices. Yeah. It's just the information just gets pushed into their head. I don't know what they do with it afterwards. I don't know how that could be enjoyable, but yeah, you know that's the way their brain works. Yeah, um, but mm-hmm. I, I am. It's another thing that drew me to this book. I'm, a, I'm a King fanatic. I, yeah. I, okay. Cool. I actually, so <laughs> when I was when I was 11 years old, uh, I bought for my dad for Christmas uh, a book, which the, the punchline to this story is going to be completely flat in this audience usually i tell this story to people and they're like oh you know you guys are going to know immediately what i'm talking about <laughs> i bought the running man for my dad mm-hmm. by richard bachman this was probably in 1979 probably 1979 and i oh, was yeah. too mm-hmm. young i was too young to know who stephen king was yeah so i yeah. bought a richard bachman book. that's crazy or my dad, and then I read it after he was done. And 
And I was like, oh my God, this is, like, this uh, is really good. Yeah. And, and it was like, it was like four years <laughs> later that I discovered that Richard Bachman was Stephen King. Yeah, I can't, what year was that, 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 that came out that he was Richard Bachman? I can't remember. Early 80s. Early 80s. 80s. Before early Misery, 80s. yeah. Yeah, it was the yeah, early late 80s. late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Thinner so was, so yeah. was the one that I... Been reading right. Stephen King before I knew there was a person named Stephen <laughs> yeah. King. And I think when Thinner came out, there's a great... Can you guys hear me, by the way, okay? Because I lost yeah. my mm-hmm. right headphone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the battery ran out. Interestingly, this one has 40% left, and this one is 0%. I don't know. I just like the one. But there's a whole that whole story. I wish somebody would write a, a um a, maybe a book is asking too much, but I wish somebody would write an article or an essay about um the Bachman thing because King has talked about thinner coming out. And the story behind how he got outed as Bachman is really interesting. Fascinating, yeah. It's in a couple of those Bev Vincent mm-hmm. kind of like it's like Stephen King, you know, all encompassing all the information you ever want to know about the Stephen King kind of books. But I would love for somebody to like do a deep dive into it because he was pissed. Yeah, yeah. That this guy, and I think if I remember correctly, the short version is not that this is pertinent to our podcast that we're doing right now, but there was huh? something about like there's a bookseller who looked up the copyright information or yep. something like mm-hmm. that, and then saw something something connected to Stephen King and then basically outed him to like a reporter and that was like the end of it. but King was furious he was like it was not something oh, yeah. he wanted to have out there um it was also interesting to me that he was like I needed to create Richard Bachman because I had too much content <laughs> yeah it's so and awesome I, couldn't, like... I could they, my publisher was saying I could only I couldn't publish more than two books a year so I created yeah. Richard Bachman so I could publish more than two books a year yeah, it's so crazy. I, just, I was published all under my own name. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think like, you're ever going to have? Buy it if you don't want it, you ever going to have a year where you like publish uh, uh, regulators and desperation? Can 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 you be two people and two separate entities, both complete? Well, I mean, this year, this year, Gothic, Boys in the Valley, and No One Is Safe is coming out. No One Is Safe is a story collection. Last year, I had. And you had Don't Let Them Get You a Down, child right? That was this year, right? Last year, I had A Child Alone with Strangers, Boy with the Blue Rose Heart, which is a children's book, Tom- uh, Don't Let Them Get You Down, which is a non-genre book, uh, all came out last year, 2022. In so, your poem collection, right? I think that came out 2021. Beneath the Pale Sky oh, and okay. the Poetry Collection came out 2021. Oh, so, okay. yeah. so And then and I... Three books coming out this year, and I have two books coming out in twenty twenty four. So you're right so, on the right on the border of needing another personality. I, I I'm 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 never gonna do that. I don't think I I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I don't I don't know. I it's like I I'm the, I'm not. Uh, my thinking is I wrote it. I want credit for it. So um, yeah, <laughs> I don't care if it doesn't fit the marketing plan. I don't care if it. People get sick of me. I don't care if like publishers are annoyed. I don't care. Like, you know, it's just like, look, I wrote it. I'm putting my name on it. Um, yeah. If it's science fiction and if it doesn't fit your marketing plan, I don't, that's not my problem. That's your problem. That's a, that's a you problem, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going yeah, to, you know, you're... Nick Cutter, Nick Cutter once said, Craig Davidson once said on a podcast that he, he, he still regrets to this day having created Nick Carter um, because his agent made him do it. And he said, I wish I just kept it everything under my own, mm-hmm. my own name, even though Craig Davidson and Nick Carter books are very different. Mm-hmm. But you're already creating this kind of thing where there are different flavors of Philip. You know, it's mm. not like, I any, feel like every, any book that every, you open could be a yeah. different it's something very unique yeah yeah i don't do the same thing i rarely do the same thing twice yeah but yeah. i'm sure i will but yeah no i and i don't mean that in any way arrogantly it's just like i just my i write whatever i feel like writing in my taste you know i i go different directions and um i do want to write a sequel to gothic um i do have an idea for gothic 2 called gothic the end um but I don't know now. Now that's pinned. 
I had I was very excited about it. I was going to try and get it out at the end of next year, but uh, now I'm, oh, that would have been I'm, awesome. I have maybe <clears throat> next year being twenty twenty four end of twenty twenty four. Yeah, but now I'm gonna I don't know. I'm I. I have questions. I got to figure out. I got to figure out some public. <laughs> I got to figure out the publishing. I need, uh, I need answers side. to some questions. <laughs> yeah. So to your point about <clears throat> whoever. Pilot, um. They're. I don't want to give anything away. Well, after after we do the recording, we can hash it out a little bit. There is there is I, there is the story does continue. Yeah. So and I, and I know and I know exactly what I want to do. I just don't know how I would publish it, which is kind of it's more of a business thing than a creative thing. Yeah. 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 All right, Mitch. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? I got to go kind of soon. Oh no, you're you good. Get I, any more that was for Eric. I I think that was basically all I had. I mean, it was you know this is just more of a conversation, and it's I think so, it was it, awesome. It's so fascinating the the audio. I, Mm-hmm. stuff is so um intriguing there's a book i just read called um the nestlings and it hasn't come out yet it's written by nat cassidy who wrote a very uh, uh wrote a book called mary that was very successful for nightfire and his new book is called the nestlings which is coming out later this year i think um and i'm not giving anything away but there's a the character in that book is an audiobook narrator and uh oh funny and, and so there's some interesting there's some interesting insight i don't know if nat actually knows any audiobook narrators personally or whatever but um there's some interesting insights into that world it, it doesn't go deep into it it's just like what she does for a job but there are some interesting moments where i was kind of like well that's it you know that was they uh... think about the material Rose... doing a sex scene for example or whatever yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. well uh... rose mattered what didn't the Oh, was there an audiobook narrator in that? Did they have audiobook narration in? Yeah, it had. It, it was a new thing. Straight the cassette, I, baby. I think it might have been Rose Matter, where she uh, she, uh, just, she just stumbled into. It's all it's like it's like a it's like a it's like a computer, but there's it's it, I don't know how to explain it, but there's no it's just it's just like a black tape inside and it makes sound. I don't know how to help you. Other yeah, it's a, that, it's a weird. It's small. Old it's technology. It's the size of a postcard. From don't worry about it. Back in the day, I don't right? get it. Yeah, trying to describe this to Mitch. Was it like okay. an MP3? M- it's MP2? like an MP3 it's, that no, you uh, <laughs> you used to have no. to take it with your actual it's hand like, and like put like, it. Oh, so it's like a tape. It's like you a know, VHS. you tape something like a you know a Christmas yeah. presents. You tape the scotch tape out and you put them on the, the thing to hold the paper yeah. down flat. It's like yeah. that, but it makes sound. They used to put sound on oh, that. Interesting. Interesting. What a, what a great Go on the internet medium. you can find some pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah, I'll Google it. <laughs> the, most, the most undurable medium of all time. <laughs> well, that's gone. I really sat there with a with a pencil twisting the stupid Imagine wheel. Imagine <laughs> Imagine you're listening to an MP3 and it just goes, I'm not doing this anymore. Just warping. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm done. You've listened. To, you've listened as many times as you can. Yeah, <laughs> I've just been eaten by the uh, machine in the yeah. car. Yeah, that's how the record companies they should have been okay because I know there are certain Ramones albums that I bought five or six times just because I had to because yeah. I destroyed the cassette or I ruined the record. Or, so if you guys couldn't figure out how to stay alive when the internet came around, that's your problem. You know what's interesting, and now that people don't, enough people don't know about this little blip in the uh, pre-technology era, um, pre-digital technology era, is uh, cassette singles. Remember cassette singles? So, they, Mitch, you probably don't know what this even is. So you would go into a <laughs> record store. No. That was a store I mean, where they sold music. I can't explain it to you. And um, in a mall, music was like literally on the walls, which was a big bins, building, like Amazon. No, no, not like yeah. it. Don't worry about it. I can't explain no? it. Oh. But but you'd go into a store and, it, and you'd buy like a 99 cents and you'd buy a cassette tape and it would have, even I thought it was stupid. And I was like 16. I was like, wait a minute, I'm buying a cassette for one song? You put one <laughs> song into the thing and that that's it? The whole cassette for one, a cassette single. And they were like the hottest thing for like a minute, for like a for like a week. You were like, they're that's everywhere. That's crazy. Dude, and I was like, the paper, the, the they they had the cassette tape, 
the they printed full on the cassette tape. Full they had the packet, they had the, the sleeve for a single they had the saran wrap around the sleeve, and you would take the saran wrap off, you take it out of the sleeve, you put it in your car, you listen to one song, and that was it. <laughs> You're done. Moving on. Well, you might you yeah. probably, usually, usually you usually got a B shot side. of Jaeger. You got a B side. Yeah, music. there. Yeah, there was probably. Oh, so two, yeah. two songs. Yeah, okay. Two songs. That I don't know sense. because I never bought yeah. the stupid thing. So like, this is the stupidest <laughs> thing I've ever heard of. I'm not going to buy a whole cassette. No, I did. And yet, then they got to put in because then you have these containers that hold the cassettes. And then like, I'm going to waste a whole container slot That's on fair. one song. Come on, man, I ain't doing that. But I don't think they always had a B side. I think sometimes the B side was the song. It was the same song again. Same song over again. Yeah. So that yeah. way, if you had a fancy cassette player where it automatically. Re, 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 play the reverse side yeah, yeah. the only is fancy listen people to have one that. song all you can the day. same song over and over again all day long man <laughs> i miss yeah, the, the cassette single man the cassette <laughs> single that was I miss the 80s that was something else that was a the worst idea probably ever <laughs> gonna do that with audiobooks <laughs> you buy an, oh, a cassette yeah. with one page on it well Just then you buy the <laughs> audiobooks and it'd be like 20 cassettes and you oh, have yeah. to like mm-hmm. oh what cassette number are we on like 14 and you have to and then they had the cds and even the cds were like like four cds five yeah. cds whatever yeah cds now you're talking my language i had cds i don't think we are <laughs> they were talking <laughs> no, to mom still now <laughs> still now yeah <laughs> uh, i still got my well, i still got i still got my cd I, you know, I will say I I'm going to age myself a little bit, um, but I got into vi- uh, collecting vintage records. I'm talking vintage. Shut okay? up, Mitch. Mitch, just shut up. <laughs> from the 80s? Yes. Thriller? From the 80s. Thriller? When? <laughs> Scorpions? No, I, I do. I have uh, my 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 parents' old records. I've got all, a bunch of Beatles records, Jimi Get Hendrix. Wham. Nice. Wham. I do not have any Wham, no, unfortunately. Maybe Frankie I'll. Jimi Hendrix, on, listen. Listen. In all seriousness, Jimi Hendrix on vinyl sounds unbelievable. Dude, yeah, I, I have a pretty nice vinyl setup. I I play music, so I, I'm very into music. Um, it's so, yeah. uh, you you get some electric light, get some electric light orchestra on vinyl, and you'll be nice. You'll be you'll be in heaven. You'll be like, what is happening right now? Those guys okay. really yeah, mess. Those guys really mess with the phonics, man. And no and I love backwards it. backwards masking. There's yeah, you can. If you, if you do it backwards, you can just satanic messages, which is just a that's just a free bonus. You don't have to pay extra for that. Yep. It just comes <laughs> with the record, it's like those B sides we're talking about. Um, yeah, it's a bit but, like hail Satan. But backwards, yeah, D sides. Um, if you play uh, which we call it, Sergeant Pepper backwards, right? Paul is yeah, dead. Paul is Paul dead. said, yeah, yeah, classic. I saw I saw Paul live. That was one of the best shows of my life. Oh, that's that's cool. He's still I saw Alan John yeah. live. I saw Billy Joel live. Mm. I saw Michael. I saw the Jackson Five live. Wow! Wow! That was my first. Wow! That was my first con. That was the first concert I ever went to. Jackson Five. I saw Michael my Moore first, live. Yeah. That's his hair did amazing. not catch on fire. His hair did not catch on fire. <laughs> so you're out of Mitch, line. Mitch, you don't so. understand that reference, but it has to no, be. No, I saw. I saw. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I I've seen clips, okay. I've seen clips on the YouTube. Fucking um, FC. Almost killed Michael Jackson. People don't know. If you were to tell somebody on the street, Pepsi almost killed Michael Jackson, they would be like, set what his you head on talking? fire. Pepsi you set know his head Pepsi on fire. set his head on fire. <laughs> what? What are you totally talking inappropriate. about? Inappropriate. Yeah, he almost died. Yeah, yeah he did. Anyway. anyway. He did. Yeah. Yeah, um, but not from, well, not from his head burning, though. Not from Pepsi. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe from Pepsi. We don't know. It couldn't have helped. Um, yeah. Big farm. In the long term, yeah. those chemicals burning sure. on his head. Yeah. Couldn't have been good. Well, uh, Michael Jackson's a rabbit hole. I don't think we should go down. <laughs> Probably not. I have seen too many documentaries about Michael Jackson. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you so much uh, for, for joining me tonight. This was so much fun um, talking to Philip, one of my favorite authors, and now Eric, one of my favorite uh, narrators. Uh, I cannot yeah. wait to check out more of your stuff. Uh, and, so I'm, and hoping Eric and I, I'm hoping Eric yeah. and I are going to do some other projects here coming up. So And I right. would love it. I would love it, Eric. You crushed it. Um, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you guys again. This was so much fun. 
And as I said before to you, Philip, thank you for creating shit. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I have no other function. <laughs> I can't actually right, leave well. this chair. I would, I would see this is it. This is, I can go. This, this is as far as I'm allowed to go. The one direction, at least you have some freedom. Go this yeah. far, the other direction, and then food's brought to me, which is nice. There's a little That's thing nice. that pops up here, and I can eat. Uh, so it's actually not that bad, generally yeah. speaking. There's a tube living the dream that runs out. Yeah, it's fine. Right. It's a tube that runs live out. very similar lifestyles on opposite <laughs> ends of the production schedule, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, thank awesome. you man well yeah yeah thank, thank you. you guys yeah uh, i'll see y'all at the book club cheers